In this video, we will learn about the common cybersecurity threats, the different types of hackers, and the CIA triad. Let's first describe the term cybersecurity. It is the practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic systems, networks, and data from malicious attacks. The threats countered by cybersecurity are cybercrime, cyber attack, and cyber terrorism. Cybercrime is the use of a computer or the internet as an instrument to carry out or further illegal activities, such as the following. Committing fraud. Theft of intellectual property, which means violation of intellectual property rights like copyright, patent, and trademark. Identity theft, which means to act as someone else to obtain a person's personal information and use it for financial gain. Theft of equipment and information due to the mobile nature of devices and increasing information capacity. Sabotage, which refers to destroying a company's website to cause a loss of customers' confidence. Information extortion, which means the theft of a company's property or information to receive payment and exchange. And violating privacy. When we say cyber attack, it is an attempt to destroy expose, modify, disable, steal, or gain unauthorized access to any computer network, computer information system, electronic infrastructure, or personal computing device. When we talk about cyber terrorism, it is the use of tools to shut down vital national infrastructures such as energy, communications, transportation systems, or any other operation to coerce or intimidate the government or civilian population. Cyber terrorists attack people or property trying to inflict enough damage to cause panic or generate fear. Here are some common methods used by perpetrators to threaten cybersecurity. Malware. It is a contraction for malicious software. It is software designed to damage and destroy computer systems. There are a number of different types of malware, including virus. It is malicious software that attaches itself to a clean file and spreads throughout a computer system, infecting files with malicious code. Once downloaded, the virus will lay dormant until the file is opened and in use. Worm. It is malicious software that rapidly replicates and spreads to any device within the network. Worms do not need host programs to disseminate. A worm infects a device via a downloaded file or a network connection before it multiplies and disperses at an exponential rate. Trojan. It is a type of malware that is disguised as legitimate software. It can gain access to sensitive data and then modify, block, or delete the data. Unlike normal viruses and worms, Trojans are not designed to self-replicate. Spyware. It is malicious software that runs secretly on a computer and reports back to a remote user. It targets sensitive information and can grant remote access to predators. A specific type of spyware is a keylogger, which records your keystrokes to reveal passwords and personal information. Ransomware. It is malicious software that gains access to sensitive information within a system, encrypts that information so that the user cannot access it, and then demands a financial payout for the data to be released. It is commonly part of a scam. Adware. It is malicious software used to collect data on your computer usage and provide advertisements to you. It can also redirect your browser to unsafe sites, and it can even contain Trojan horses and spyware. Additionally, Significant levels of adware can slow down your system noticeably. Botnets. A botnet, short for robot network, is a network of computers infected by malware that is under the control of a single attacking party, known as a bot herder. Each individual machine under the control of the bot herder is known as a bot. The attacking party can command every computer on its botnet to simultaneously carry out a coordinated criminal action. Common botnet actions include distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks. It leverages the massive scale of the botnet to overload a target network or server with requests, rendering it inaccessible to its intended users. Scareware. It masquerades as a tool to help fix your system, but when the software is executed, it will infect your system or completely destroy it. The software will display a message, often using a pop-up ad, to frighten you and force you to take some action like buy software or pay them to fix your system. Rootkit. It is malicious software that infects a computer's hard drive to gain root access. 
to allow unauthorized administrative privileges to control the computer and to steal private data. Rootkits are difficult to detect because they are designed to stay hidden. SQL injection. An SQL injection is a type of cyber attack used to take control of and steal data from a database. Cyber criminals exploit vulnerabilities in data-driven applications to insert malicious code into a database via a malicious SQL statement. This gives them access to the sensitive information contained in that database. Social engineering. It is a manipulation technique that exploits human error to gain private information, access, or valuables. It tends to lure unsuspecting users into exposing data, spreading malware infections, or giving access to restricted systems. Some of the methods used for social engineering on the internet include phishing. Phishing attacks are the practice of sending fraudulent communications that appear to come from a reputable source intended to trick you into clicking on a malicious link or attachment. It is usually performed through email. The goal is to steal sensitive data like credit card and login information or to install malware on the victim's machine. Farming. It is the fraudulent practice of redirecting the users to a fake website that mimics the appearance of a legitimate one, with the goal of stealing personal information such as passwords, account numbers, and other personal information. Farming can occur even when you click an authentic link or type in the website URL yourself because the website's domain name system, or DNS, has been hijacked by a cyber criminal. Brute force. It is a method of gaining access to a system by guessing the password. It requires the use of software that guesses thousands of passwords at a time until the right combination of characters is selected. For example, it's still possible to use brute force software on most Wi-Fi routers because they don't typically limit the number of passwords attempts you can make. Cyber attacks, therefore, come in numerous forms, and so do the hackers that launch them. When we say hacker, it can be anyone who utilizes their computer software and hardware knowledge to break down and bypass a computer, device, or network security measures. Hackers can be classified into five different categories. First, script kiddies. They often cause no real harm and have very limited hacking skills. They simply copy lines of code from other sources and use them for viruses that do little damage. Second, white hat hackers. They are also known as ethical hackers or penetration testers. They use their skills to hack the system that they have permission for in order to find vulnerabilities in a system and fix them. Third, black hat hackers. They are also known as unethical hackers or security crackers. These people hack the system illegally to steal money or to achieve their own illegal goals. They find regular citizens, companies like hospitals and banks, government officials and entities with weak security and steal money or credit card information. They can also modify or destroy the data. Gray hat hackers. They hack for enjoyment and they are not driven by money. Although they do not steal, blackmail, or hold information for ransom, they do commit acts that most would consider unethical. An example of this would be hacking into a company system, discovering a weakness, and then publishing it to the public instead of informing that company. Hacktivists. The people or groups that carry out hacktivism are referred to as hacktivists. When we say hacktivism, it is a social or political activist act that is carried out by breaking into and wrecking havoc on a secure computer system. Hacktivism is a mix of hacking and activism. The aim of hacktivists is to go after people or organizations they think have wronged others in any way and expose their wrongdoing for all the world to see. Some of the major hacktivist groups are the following. Anonymous. It is possibly the most iconic and well-known hacktivist group, widely recognized for its cyber attacks against several governments, corporate, and religious websites. Legion of Doom. It grew to be one of the most influential hacking groups in technological history. They published technical information about hacking called Hacker Manifesto. It is often cited as the inspiration for the flood of new hackers. Masters of Deception. It is one of the most notorious groups of hackers. It is best known for hacking into and exploiting a large number of telephone companies. Chaos Computer Club 
It is Europe's largest association of hackers. It advocates for government transparency and freedom of information. To identify vulnerabilities and methods for addressing problems and creating effective solutions, the CIA triad is used. The three letters in the CIA triad stand for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. It is a respected model that forms the cornerstone for the development of any organization's security systems and policies. Here's a breakdown of the three key concepts. Confidentiality. It refers to an organization's efforts to prevent sensitive information from unauthorized access attempts. This means only the authorized users should have access to the resources. And within a group of authorized users, there may be additional, more stringent limitations on precisely which information those authorized users are allowed to access. Some of the methods used to ensure confidentiality are having data encryption, using user IDs and passwords, enabling two-factor authentication, and utilizing biometric verification. Integrity. It involves maintaining the consistency, accuracy, and trustworthiness of data over its entire life cycle. Steps must be taken to ensure that data cannot be altered by unauthorized people. One of the steps is to include checksum for verification of integrity. When we say checksum, it is a sequence of numbers and letters used to check files and other data for errors that occur during transmission or storage. If you know the checksum of an original file, you can use a checksum utility to confirm your copy is identical. Remember that small changes in the file produce very different looking checksums. Availability. It means information should be consistently and readily accessible to authorized parties. This is best ensured by rigorously maintaining all hardware, maintaining a properly functioning operating system environment that is free of software conflicts, keeping current with all necessary system upgrades, providing adequate communication bandwidth, and preventing the occurrence of bottlenecks. To prevent data loss from natural disasters, a backup copy may be stored in a geographically isolated location. In short, confidentiality is a set of rules that limits access to information. Integrity is the assurance that the information is trustworthy and accurate, and availability is a guarantee of reliable access to the information by authorized people. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about the common cybersecurity threats, the different types of hackers, and the CIA triad. If you find this helpful, please like and leave a comment. Please consider subscribing to my channel too. Thank you for your time.